have your Bibles this evening, you want to turn with me. I want to read uh, just a little bit, uh, one verse, I guess, out of uh, Luke chapter 2. That will uh, get us started off in the area we want to go, and we're going to talk about uh, the angel candle. We have... Um, we have looked at these candles so far, and we, we we're thinking about the angel candle this evening. And then in Luke chapter 2 and verse 11, Luke 2 and verse 11 says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Now that's a pretty good message from an angel, isn't it? But it said that, for unto you is born this day in the city of David. Now, I want to ask you a minute. When you think, and, and be honest, now take your halo off and, and just be honest, you know, everyday living. When we think of angels, what do we think of? What's the first thought when you hear the word angel? White, okay. What about a little chubby baby, you know? Them little little chubby angels we seen when we was little. Am I the only one who thinks that way? Um, what about Clarence on It's a Wonderful Life? We, we, we think about that. You're going to be watching that before long. But what is it when we think of angels that really sets in our mind? And I, I don't know about you, but it, I probably don't think about them a whole lot. Uh, I, I believe them. The Bible's real plain about it. I, I, uh, I, I believe, uh, uh, I've said, I think I just said recently that if I have a guardian angel, my guardian angel will give me a rough time when I get to glory. I made his life rough a few years ago. But, uh, uh, and want to think about angels. So I'm going to tell you a few things. I know one thing that the angels do, uh, they execute judgment. And if you look in the Old Testament, there was 185,000 Assyrian camp was destroyed one night with judgment on them by an angel. Uh, also, you look at Sodom and Gomorrah. His two angels came in to bring judgment upon Sodom and Gomorrah and destroyed that city. And that they were angels of the Lord. So that is one of the things the angels to do. They execute judgment. And they're going to be real busy in the end times. And if you look in Revelation in places that they're, they're going to have a big part of the judgment and the things that's going to come down in the way of, of the world. Uh, another thing they do, they help when trouble in times of trouble. Look at Daniel. Uh, uh, the said the angel come and shut the lion's mouth and and uh, tuck tuck that uh, fear away and tuck that trouble away. Uh, also, um, you remember Peter had got thrown in prison. Uh, they had killed James and they had arrested Peter. And he said, "Well, I'm next. I'm sure." He said, I, "This is it. I'm I'm gone." And the angel came and you remember and led him out and opened the gates. And Peter thought he's having a vision or something. And then. Went till he got outside the last gate and the angel disappeared and the Rhoda wouldn't let him in when he got there where they were praying. But this was one of the jobs of the angels. And then as in the Christmas time, we know they're messengers. Uh, they came and brought the, the uh, message to Mary and Joseph and, and told them that she would be having a baby and, and then told Joseph, said that she, everything's good. Go ahead and take her as your wife and uh, uh, this is God's will, and that's the Son of God. And so what a message of peace that was brought to them. What about the shepherds? Uh, these old fellows was out in the field, and nobody wouldn't have nothing to do with them, and here the skies was full of angels. I, I believe if there's one thing that, that we uh, in plays that we really uh, uh, don't drive across, I think the angels cut a shine. If I understand the Bible correctly, the heavens was full of them. And they were rejoicing and singing and telling how great that it was that the Messiah was coming. And what a message that was brought to these shepherds that was out in a field that night. And, and, um, but thinking of peace, do, do you think, what does the nativity do? I, to me, when I look at the nativity scene, this peace comes upon me. 
I, I just love, uh, love that. Uh, even my Charlie Brown nativity scene brings peace to me. I, I just uh, enjoy it so much. And I think about the nativity and I think about that night when the angels brought the message and said, if you'll go to Bethlehem, you'll find uh, uh, this Savior. You'll find the Messiah. You'll find the one. And they, they declared peace to be upon them. And, uh, but I was thinking that our nation needs peace. We're, we're in a mess right now. And it, it is so awful. Uh, we're, we're split politically. Uh, uh, I, I mean, if you look at the way the boats have been going the last few years, we're, we're just about divided down the middle. Uh, and there's so much turmoil and so much trouble. And, and we're, we're at the point now, the Bible talks about calling good evil and evil good. And that's exactly where we are. That, that uh, uh, if you try to do something good and do it in the name of the Lord, you're, you're a bad guy. And, and, and then all the ones that's way out there in left field, they're doing what's good. And so uh, that's where we are today. And boy, I tell you, I, I think this year as we think about peace and we think about angels, I, um, Let's pray. I, I, we pray for peace in Israel. I think we ought to really pick up our prayers for peace in the United States of America. And, and that we just really get concerned about uh, how violent our nation has become. Uh, it, it is just so bad. But our world needs peace. Uh, if you look right now, all the conflict that's going on around the world, there's wars, or rumors of war. Uh, 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 pray for peace in Israel. Uh, Ukraine, I have, I have just poured my heart out for that country so bad. And, and the, you, you look at, now there's uh, uh, China and Taiwan and North Korea and all of this stuff are going on. And uh, we need peace in the world, don't we? And uh, I, I just hope how soon the angels get sent to bring peace. But in Romans 8, verse 22, the Bible says for... We know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. We're in a world right now that's groaning with, with travail and, and all of the pain and everything that's going on. And we're, un, we're under sin's curse in a bad way. The sin has cursed and we need uh, uh, the peace from God that passes all understanding. And I'm thankful uh, for the message of the angels. Now we've talked about faith, hope, and joy. But tonight, I'm going to, I guess you already know I'm going to talk about peace a little bit. Um, but the angels came that night and proclaimed peace to the world. And he was coming in as a little baby. And back in Luke chapter uh, 2 and verse 11, the Bible said, There is born unto you this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you saved tonight? Are, we ought to be thankful and happy about that peace that come through him. Uh, and I will get into it and talk a little more about it. But in the heart of a believer, the peace of God. I better be quiet. I'm going, I'm, I'm going to get me messed up. Uh, but I want to look tonight at some things about Jesus. And about this peace. And, and look at... at um, and let's look at these and let me light these candles. Tonight we will be adding the angel candle or the peace candle to it. Now I won't be doing a candle next um, uh, Wednesday. We'll be doing the baptism. And... Uh, I don't know if I've turned this on yet. Have I? I probably won't get too far away tonight. Um, but I want to look at some things about Christ. And one thing, first thing I want to look at is his person. His person, his title is the Prince of Peace. Wow, what a title. The Prince of Peace. In Isaiah 9 and verse 6. The Bible said, for unto you is born, for unto us a child is born, and unto a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, 
the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Wow. Uh, no other thing, nobody else, nothing can, can hold that title but Jesus Christ. He is the only one that can bring that peace. And as we go through this Christmas season, do you have peace in your heart? I mean, I know we have turmoil and we have a lot of things, but have you experienced that peace lately? Have you experienced it in maybe a difficult time or a troubled time? That is because the Prince of Peace has come and brought that to you. It's nothing that we have done. It's nothing that Free Will Baptist has done. Uh, I, I'm, I'm okay with Free Will Baptist, but that didn't save me. Uh, that don't bring me the peace that passes all understanding. It's that relationship I have with Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The night I asked Him to forgive me of my sins and, and to change me and uh, invited the Holy Spirit into my life. And, and uh, from that, there's where the peace come in, through, through that relationship with Him. And I'm thankful for that. Uh, as, a, as a prince of peace, I think about a, um, a captain or the master. In Joshua 5, when he was, uh, uh, Joshua was tore all to pieces and the, everything was going on, and here came a soldier. And uh, Joshua said, are you for us or against us? And he said he was the captain of the host of the Lord. And you remember what he told Joshua? said, take your shoes off. You're in holy ground. You're, 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 in other words, you're around God. That's what the burning bush or the God said out of it to Moses. And, and he told him to take his shoes off. And, and the prince of peace, the captain of the host of the Lord, that is in charge of peace. Glory, hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something. Before I committed my life to the Lord, I never experienced much peace. There was always something that I had to get done. There was always something that I needed. There was always more work to do. Uh, uh, I, was, uh, I was starting out. I guess I got off of it, but I, I was starting out a workaholic like my daddy. And uh, Sunday was a good day that I could get a lot of work done. Uh, uh, before we committed our lives to the Lord. And I, we didn't ha I didn't have that peace. I was always moving, doing, striving, trying to get something done, trying to get uh, uh, to this point, uh, looking for some good cattle or, or making sure the crops was good or uh, needing a new tractor or needing, I didn't get to buy a new one, but <laughs> looking for a tractor and, and looking for things. And I, and, um, I remember uh, Harry Kiker one time, and uh, this was years and years ago, and I, we were talking and, I said, we went by the car lot, I was looking at trucks, and he said, uh, <laughs> uh, well, I, I didn't know you was looking to buy a new truck. And I said, oh, I'm not, I just swung by there. He said, well, don't get on the lot if you're not looking to buy. You're going to tempt yourself. I said, all right, you got it, uh, you hit the nail on the head. But um, always looking and pushing for something. It's Jesus. In Isaiah 53, in verse 5, the Bible says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Several years ago, this next part of this verse really jumped off a page at me and really instilled itself in my life. And I, I've, I've this hadn't got over it. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. I had never really thought about that. But the beatings he took was for our peace. The punishment that he received was so that I could have peace when I laid my head on the pillow at night. So I could have peace in a difficult world when everything's coming down and toward the end. And, and it's really looking and you can see everything. He paid that punishment so I could have that peace. Whoa, glory, hallelujah. I don't, I don't know about you. Does that, that, that just excites me to death. That the God of the universe took that punishment for me so I could experience peace. Wow. Um, I had never got over that. Um, um, and with his stripes, we are healed. That punishment was for my peace. When I was reconciled to the Father... That's where I learned to, and, and that peace come from. That when he, I, I've heard it said he hung on the cross and he reached one hand down and he reached one hand up and tied mankind back, united back with the Father. 
a sin had separated back at Adam and Eve, and now he 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 uh, went over that gulf and tied back together where we could come to him and could experience that peace. Um, let me read you something that I a story I, I I thought was pretty interesting. Robert Louis Stevenson tells of a storm that caught a vessel off a rocky coast and threatened to drive it and its passengers to destruction. In the midst of the terror, one daring man, contrary to orders, went up to the deck and made a dangerous passage to the pilot house and saw the steerman at his post holding the wheel unwaveringly and inch by inch turning the ship out once more to the sea. The pilot saw the watcher and smiled. Then the daring passenger went below and gave out a note of cheer. I have seen the face of the pilot. And he smiled. All is well. And as I thought about that, what, 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 wouldn't you like to be able to see the face of our Savior? And the smile upon his face. And when, and when that smile on his face means all is well. That, that it, it's going to be all right. Because of what he has done for us and the things he has made possible for us. And I'm so thankful tonight if we could spiritually see that. First thing we saw was his person. Now I want to look at his passion. In Romans 5, in chapter 1, or Romans 5, verse 1. The Bible said, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. This was his passion, that we would have peace with God. That he was concerned about us having his atonement satisfied the Father, satisfied the wrath of the Father. Uh, the Bible says that the one that sins is the one that will be punished, and, and that is who was guilty of their, of their sins. And Jesus made a way, and he took the punishment of our sins away and made an atonement for them and made things where we are justified before God righteous. Wow. He reconciled the world by making it possible that old, dirty, filthy, rotten sinners could have peace with God. That's the last thing in the world I deserve. I deserve hell. It's where I ought to be. But Jesus made a way and paid my way. And that is why he came that Christmas that we enjoy. Now I want to hit a, just a few things that he makes this peace and we can be all right through it. We need to, some things we need to do, we need to lay down our weapons of rebellion. We need to put pride aside. And, and uh, you know, we live in a society to where it points that pride is the way to be. We need to be number one. We need more things. We need to look better. If you'll buy this product, it'll make you look better. If you'll buy this product, it'll make you look wealthier. If you, if you do this, you do that. And, and so the devil, uh, you remember the, um, the first sin that was ever sinned in, in the universe as far as I could tell? If you look in the book of Isaiah chapter 14, the devil exalted himself with pride and said, I'll set my kingdom above God and I'll be as the most high. And that is pride. And when we let pride set in our lives, that will destroy you quicker than anything. Putting that aside is a bitterness, envy, boy a biggie, unwilling to forgive someone of what they have done to you. There is a big one. You will never be where the Lord wants you to be if you can't get over it and put that aside and forgive like Christ forgave us. I think about so often the parable of the guy that, that owed uh, his master a lot of money. And he forgave him. And then a, little, a guy owed him just a little bit of money. And he said, had him put in jail to, for that money. And you know, I, thought, as I have thought about that so many times. And I think about, that's the way I am. I owe the Lord 
so much that my debts, he had forgiven me for so much, and I sure ought to be willing to forgive somebody that's done just a little something because my debt is far greater than that little. Amen. And forgiveness is a big thing with, that will keep us from having that peace that we need. When we allow things to settle in and, and, and drag us down and bog us down and bog our minds down, it's hard to have peace. We lay down our weapons of rebellion. We submit our will to God. Saying, Lord, whatever you want in my life, I'll do it. Can it get, I never got one amen out there. That's a hard prayer to pray, pray isn't it? You know, we so often, but I'm, I'm going to tell you from experience, until I did that, I never had experienced the peace and the joy that I have since I answered the call to preach. And it doubled or tripled or way out of the roof when I went to Marbleton because I was exactly where God wanted me to be. And I experienced peace like I never had before. I experienced a, a, a satisfaction of the soul like because I was smack dab in the middle of God's will. And since then I have been. Now I'm not going to say I didn't have had trouble and had times that I didn't feel all that. But they did something different. And when you get to the center of God's will. You know, when my dad passed away, uh, his cousin come by and he prayed with me. And I hadn't been in church long and he said, you know, there's the permissive will of God, then there's the perfect will of God. And he said, we're going to pray for the perfect will. You know, in our lives, there's a permissive will of God. Uh, uh, we try to do good. We come to church. We do things. We pay our tithes. We, but have we got to the part where it's the perfect will of God? I don't mean doing good and being a good person I'm talking about being led and exactly, you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, you're exactly where God wants you. Spiritually, physically, whatever it is. See, there, there's no peace like that. I can tell you, I can tell you, I'm, I mean, I'm no, I'm no super Christian, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying. But I have experienced that peace that comes from being right in the center of His will. And I, I want you, I hope that each of you, knows exactly what I'm talking about. And if you don't, I'm going to ask you to pray about it. And um, you, ne you never know. Uh, uh, David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord and dwell in the tents of the wicked. It, 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 it may be, you, you know something, a great ministry, and some of you ladies has got it. My mother-in-law's got it. Sending cards. Wow, what a ministry of the Lord. How many, ever, how, many, how many of you enjoy receiving cards? I used to go visiting over around the Marbleton area, and about everywhere I went, they'd say, your mother-in-law sent me a card when I needed it the most. Fixing a meal. Picking up a telephone. It's amazing. It is amazing. And, and what happens so often, and, and you'll say amen, so often when you try to be a blessing to someone, when you get there, you get blessed. Amen. Me and Keith was going to go try to be a blessing this week, and wow, we didn't. It wasn't nowhere near the blessing we received. Amen. And uh, what a blessing uh, that it is. And I better get on with it, haven't I? In Isaiah 48, verse 22, the Bible said, There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. In Isaiah 26, 3, the Bible said, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. A perfect peace. Did you see where, where, what is right in the middle of that? Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace who what? Whose mind is stayed on thee. I'm going to tell you, <laughs> right there is the key to a lot of things in our life. To a lot of Christian things. To having the peace. If we get it right here, if we get peace here and here, we, we're going to have it everywhere. 
And if we get the things of the Lord here and we get it settled in our mind and we don't let the things of the devil and our, our lustful thoughts and uh, our, uh, our, I don't mean immoral, but I, I, just things that we want and things that, that means a lot to us and it could be immoral too, whatever, when we allow those things to come in our mind so much, it, we're not going to have the peace until we have given him our mind. He says right there, whose mind is stayed on thee. And wow, what, uh, uh, what it, uh, Jesus said in John 14 and verse 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You know, worldly peace is not. Pleasure is not going to give us that peace. The things the world has can offer nothing that will satisfy. Now, it well, might for a little while. The Bible says there's pleasure in sin for a season, for, for a short time. But it won't be two weeks down the road. Or it won't be uh, maybe the next day. Men of the world can't give it. World system is not going to give us that. Uh, uh, philosophy. Uh, religion. Uh, I'm, I'm not talking about Christianity. I'm just talking about religion. A lot of people's got religion. Uh, uh, I, I think there's a lot more people that's religious than are Christians. Amen. I had a guy ask me one time. Uh, we we were working. We'd eat lunch together, and he said so. Uh, and I prayed as we eat, and he said so. You're religious, and I said no, no. I don't try not to be religious. I'm I'm a Christian, and he didn't take it back. I said religions. The people, religious people, just wanted to kill our Savior. I, I said, I, I don't want nothing to do with religion. I, I want to do with the relationship with the Lord. And those things are not going to satisfy and give us that peace. His peace meets in our soul when our mind is settled on Him. When we have it there. Uh, let me read you what Matthew Henry said. Safety consists not in the absence of danger, but in the presence of God. Peace that Jesus gives is not the absence of trouble, but is rather the confidence that He is there with you always. Peace is such a precious jewel that I would give anything for it but truth. Matthew Henry said that. And how true that is, that the peace of knowing that whatever comes our way, He's going to be with us. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go with you to the end. Glory, hallelujah. And He's coming to get us. The last point, number three, is we've looked at His person, His passion. Now we'll look at His power. In Luke 2, 14, the Bible said, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. In Isaiah 9, 7, it says, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Uh, universal good to people. In Luke 2.10 it says that it's to all people. Aren't you thankful for that? That he give, he, uh, his blood was enough to satisfy the whole world to all people. And I'm thankful for that this evening. Jesus I, th I think I said it earlier, reconciles us with God and give w where our peace comes from. When we really experience that peace, we lay aside our differences. We don't let, just because that me and you don't agree on something, we lay that aside. I mean, sometimes it is okay to say, you know, let's just agree that we disagree. Amen? 
and that we lay it aside. I, because I don't, I don't care who it is, uh, the many in here, if we get started in, the, in, you could pick any subject you want to, there'd be at least 10 different thoughts in here and probably 40 or 50. And, and let's not let what each of us think get in. Let's just agree that as long as, as long as it don't have nothing to do with the doctrine in this book, uh, if it, so, so often it's our doctrine. Can I get an amen right there? It, it's our doctrine that we're, we're bottled up with. And, uh, and uh, bless God, my papa said this, or my granny said this. And uh, uh, granny's gospel a lot of times carries more than this one. Uh, can I get an amen right there? Um, but we lay aside differences. And we love one another. You know, I've, I've said, and I don't think I have yet, but I've said I'm going to preach a message one day. How to love people you don't like. I ain't got together yet, Brother Zenos, but I'm going to get together one of these days. How to love people you don't like. See, there's people, now don't raise your hand. Has anybody ticked you off this week? A pretty good chance. But we've got to love them anyway. And when with the peace of God that settles in our heart, we can love them even though we don't like what they're doing. Um, and we seek others' welfare. What is it? Joy. Jesus, others, and then you. And we're last. That is the way that Jesus taught us to be, it is uh, put others' needs before ours. And we banish envy. Um, you know, it's, I, I can truly say it's never bothered me when my neighbor got a new vehicle. I was always tickled me to death to see somebody else that have the blessing and the Lord bless them. Amen. And, and, but so often people envies their neighbors and envies the people they work with. And, and, and when we, we get it settled, malice is, is moved aside and pride is gone and lust. Uh, we, we, we don't lust after a lot of these things. And we live by the sword. We live by the word of God. What, what the Bible says, it's not, uh, 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 what is it, James said, don't be hearers only. But doers, doers, uh, me and Howard and Dwight and Debbie, Sister Phyllis, I don't know if Janet was with us that time, uh, went and saw George Sweden. And he signed my Bible. And he signed James 1.22. And says, don't be hearers only, but doers of the word. How important God's word is to the life of a believer. That we try to to live by it and that we don't think that this is what's going to save us this is the road map to heaven this is how we get there this is how where it tells us what roads not to take and what roads to take and what attitude to have when we when we take them and uh, i'm thankful for for the road map that the lord give us in daniel 2 44 the bible says and in these days shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Glory, hallelujah. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Glory, hallelujah. That's what Jesus come to do. That is his, his, th this Christmas that we do. All other kingdoms are going to pass away, but his will never pass away. Isaiah 65, 25. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and dust shall be the serpent's meat, and they shall not hurt nor destroy in my holy mountain, saith the Lord. Glory, hallelujah. You want to talk about universal peace when these things happen this is when what he has come to do and then in Isaiah 2 4 the Bible says and he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many peoples they shall bear their swords beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks nations shall not lift up sword against nation 
neither shall they learn of of war anymore. Now this is world peace. This is when Jesus sets his kingdom up and we live together with him forever in peace. Glory, hallelujah. There'll be no more wars and there'll be no more battles. And they said that the the weapons of war, they make uh, gardening tools out of them. Because they never learn of war. They won't be an army, Brother John. They won't be an army that have to teach people how to fight and protect because there's going to be a universal peace of God, world peace. Woo, glory, hallelujah. Isn't that an exciting thing? And that is what Christmas is about. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. I ain't watched it yet. I'll, I'll get to for long. Let me read you something. It won't take me long. This is by Tony Evans, and it talks about the picture of peace. Two painters were in a contest where each said they could paint a picture of peace. One painter painted this sunset with the sun going down over the calm water. It all looked very nice, and the picture had a very common effect. The other painter painted a picture of a storm. And in it, the sky was dark, and there was lightning and thunder and dark clouds rolling overhead. And the picture showed the waves crashing against the rocks, and things looked fairly chaotic. But in the corner of the painting at the bottom were two big stones with a bird in the middle of them, And the bird was singing. Now that's peace. Peace is where God's calm and tranquility overrides our concerns. And it don't matter what circumstance we're in. We can be in the middle of the biggest storm and be singing because of the peace of God that that settles upon our hearts. Aren't you thankful for that tonight? And I want to share with you that if, if there may be something going on that you're not experiencing that peace right now, I have no idea. I'm, I'm going to invite you tonight. I'm going to ask Brother uh, Jackie if he'd come and play us something. And I, I just want to, maybe, maybe you need, 